Welcome to Mission Independent Baptist Church, our Friday evening service. Uh, we're here tonight. Praise God. We're in the right place in the house of the Lord. And a lot of graduations going on, kids getting out for the summer. And uh, you know, we need to pray for them. We need to pray for young people. Young people, uh, they're kind of, they don't have, they need, they, need, they need Jesus Christ. That's what they need. And they need a straight path in their life. Because right now, too much wickedness going on in the world. And uh, I see wickedness every day and it just troubles me. I try to reach out and talk to kids and... Uh, some of them will listen, some won't. But we need to reach out to kids, you know. God's got to have his way. we got to tell, tell them about Jesus Christ so they can come to the Lord, they can come to the light and get out of the darkness and have a good, a good life. Yes. From a young life to an old life, have a good life. Why destroy life when you're young and have troubles and, you know, all kinds of messed up relationships with your parents and your family, friends. And you know what? You start out with Jesus and end with Jesus. Amen. And have a beautiful life in, in and through Jesus Christ. We're going to sing song number 185, His Way With Thee. Would, Would you, you live for Jesus, Jesus and be always pure and good? Would you walk with him within the narrow road? Would you have him bear your burden, carry all your load? Let him have his way with thee. His power can make you what you ought to be. His love can cleanse your heart and make you free. His love can fill your soul and you will see. T'was best for him to have his way with thee. Would you have him make you free and follow at his call? Would you know the peace that comes by giving all? Would you have him save you so that you can never fall? Let him have his way with thee. His power can make you what you ought to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. His love can fill your soul and you will see. T'was best for him to have his way with thee. Would you in his kingdom find a place of constant rest? Would you prove him true and providential test? Would you in his service labor always at his best? Let him have his way with thee. His power can make you what you ought to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. His love can fill your soul and you will see. T'was best for him to have his way with thee. You know, let Jesus have his way with, you know, you. <laughs> Keep them in your league every day. Every day we need Jesus Christ. Yeah. We got a nice card for Miss Marianne in uh, Washington. Miss Marianne uh, Dunlap. She used to be in the church here. She moved to Washington State, and she sent us a beautiful card. She supports us here at Mission Independent Baptist Church. And uh, there's a Bible verse in here I want to read. James, one seventeen. James one seventeen. And let's see what this says. It says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no var variableness, neither shadow of turning. Mm -hmm. You know, every good gift is from God. Everything you got. You know, you wake up in the morning, you got the breath of life. Thank God. You know, you got clothes. Thank God. You got food to eat. Thank God. You got water to drink. Thank God. You got a beautiful, you got a, a godly church. You got a bunch of people who love God in the church. Praise God. You know, Amen. we have to praise God and give him the glory. You know, all glory goes to God. Amen. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to talk tonight in a few places here. Uh, I'm going to talk about the blood of Jesus, his blood. Matthew 20, I'm going to go to three places. Matthew 26 to 29. Matthew 26 to 29. No blood. We need blood. If we don't have blood, we die. You know, I stuck my hand last week. I was trying to cut off this thing for my... I got allergies. A lot of uh, pollen and stuff in the air. And I was 3.30 in the morning getting up from work. And I took a steak knife. Tried to get this plastic. I was pushing. Man, I put it right into my hand. Man, blood was shooting out. Ooh. Yeah, blood, you know. 
I mean, without, did you lose too much? I was thinking, man, I maybe need stitches, but, you know, I put some pressure on it, threw some peroxide, put a nice Band-Aid, made it to work, and I'm fine, and it's healed almost. So praise God. And, uh, you know, with, you know, the blood's, blood's our life. The blood is the life of the body. And uh, without blood, you won't live. You'll die. And uh, without Jesus' blood, you won't be cleansed. He cleanses, his blood cleanses us from all sin. So let's read Matthew 26, 26 to 29. And it says, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take to eat. This is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. You know, his blood, he, he paid that blood to cleanse us from all sin, and he paid that for every single person. Yeah. Anybody who comes, you know, you're having people are in uh, a mess, you know, they're out here in the world, and they, instead of turning to Jesus, they're turning into more wickedness in the world. You need to turn and ask him to forgive your sins. He paid with his blood. Let's look at Luke 22, 19 and 20. Luke 22, 19 and 20. Luke 22, 19 and 20. It says, And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave it unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me, likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is of the is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. So, you know, Jesus was saying that this blood is the new cup. This is after his body was dead, his blood, he paid that price with his blood, and it's shed for you. It's the New Testament. It's that it's the covenant between us and God that his blood cleanses us from all sin. You know, and there's, you know, there's two ordinances in the church. One is the Lord's Supper, one is baptism. And they're both a picture of the, of the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's the good news. You know, death, burial, you know what? He can change an old, dirty sinner like me and turn me to, to, the, uh, to a clean, God-fearing person. And you know what? Your life has changed forever. You know, God changes people's lives, uh, uh, and it, you know, let's look one more, one more verse or one more uh, place we're going to. Let's go to First Corinthians eleven twenty three to thirty four. First Corinthians eleven twenty three to thirty four. It says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This is the cup, is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge our, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any, any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I pray for your will. I pray for your Holy Spirit to speak your word. Lord, I pray for your teaching, Lord. I pray for us to understand your teaching, Lord. I pray for just for your help, Lord. We pray for your will and to be in the service with us, Lord, and watch watch over the service and, and just guide us, Lord. I pray for all things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. You know, these were, you know, it's communion. The Lord's Supper, it's a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and uh, 
you know what? We can't eat unworthily. You know, it says as often as you do it. Doesn't matter. You don't have to do it. It says do this in remembrance of me. So, you know, you have to do it when you're, it says, examine yourself. We have to examine ourselves. If you don't examine yourself, you know what? You could be doing something, sin in the flesh, and you come in and take it, and it says some get sick and some sleep. Some people died from uh, taking it unworthily. You know, you don't do it. If things are going on in mayhem in your life, don't, no, I wouldn't do it. And I, w I would like to know the people who are members in the church, in the local church, in the local church, uh, they have to be, they have to be right. You know, and you want to make sure you let people know in advance that you're going to have the Lord's Supper to, hey, you know, get everything under the blood, you know, get things right, tell to talk to God. Talk you talk to God. Lord, forgive me for this. Ask him to forgive whatever anything in your life and uh you you know the Jesus paid with his blood and his body for our sins and to pay for it. He died and then he brought that blood to to, to heaven with him to the mercy seat and he paid the price. And we have to, you know, make sure when we take that. That's not it's not some small thing. You know, people you know, it's it's a big thing because God died for our sins, and we have to really, really, really pray, pray to Him before we take it. You know, it's a remembrance that Christ died for me, you, and His. You know, He shed His blood and He died, and it cleanses us from all sin. He paid it all for you and me. You know, blood is the life of the body. Let's look at Leviticus seventeen eleven. Leviticus. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Leviticus 17.11. Leviticus 17.11 says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. So you know what? Every living thing has blood. It's, got, it's, it's alive. Uh, I don't know. Insects got some kind of different blood, but for like uh, fish have blood and uh, mammals and animals have blood. And if you lose your blood, you die. It says, and I've given it unto you to the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. So atonement, atonement's rec reconciliation. It's an agreement, it's satisfaction. It's from the Greek word katalaso, it means exchange. God exchanged, he restored the favor, he reconciled us to him. The death of Christ was the perfect blood. God exchanged the fallen state of sinners for a state of favor and blessing through his grace, through God's grace. You know, the blood makes an atonement for the soul. You know, the blood, the blood, it says he's our uh, pr propitiation for, uh, for, for, for our sins. He paid for it. His blood cleanses us from all sin. Uh, you know, Christ laid down his life. It's it's a picture. You know, some people say you eat, uh, drink the blood, uh, or they drink, use wine. But you know what? It's grape juice and unleavened bread you use for the body is a picture. Some people think they're actually bringing God down from heaven and they're actually eating his f flesh and blood. But no, it's in remembrance of Jesus Christ. It's in remembrance that he died for our sins. He paid. He died on the cross. He shed his blood to pay for our sins, you know. Christ laid down his life for you, me, and the entire world. Look at John 10, 18. John 10, 18. John 10, 18. It says, No man taketh from me, but I lay it down on myself. So nobody, you know what? They ask who killed Jesus. You know, was it the Romans? Was it the Jews? Well, you know, was it the Pharisees, Sadducees? We all killed Jesus. Our sin put him on that cross. He came to pay. God sent him to pay for our sins on that cross and to die and to shed his blood. And it says, no man taketh from me, but I lay it down on myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. And he did take it again on the third day. This commandment have I received of my father. You know, Jesus laid his, it's the gospel, it's the good news, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, he laid it down. He paid the price. He paid, Jesus paid it all, all to him we know. I mean, we all, we owe him everything. All to him we owe everything. We owe him our lives because he paid with his life. I mean, who would pay for, who would you die for? You know, who would you die for? 
He died for me, he died for you, and he died for every single person in the whole world. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 6.20. 1 Corinthians 6.20. No, his blood was perfect. His blood was perfect blood. 1 Corinthians 6.20. 1 Corinthians 6.20. It says, For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You know what? We need to glorify God by our actions, what we do, what we what we say, where we go, how we live our lives. You know, because God paid. He paid the price. He paid the ultimate price. And he paid for us. And uh, we owe. You know, we owe God. Uh, you know, they, the, his blood... His perfect blood. In the old days, they used to think uh, bleeding. If somebody was sick or ill, they would bleed them. They would cut them with a razor, and they would bleed them out. And they thought by taking the blood out of the person, uh, that would heal them. But, man, a lot of times that killed the person. You know, George Washington was the first president, and uh, one night, I guess, he was around where he, he uh, in Mount Vernon, he was on a cold night, he was riding around on his horse, and he got wet. And he came in, and he left his clothes on. And he got really sick, and then that night... Uh, he told uh, his wife, he said, you know, I'm very sick, you know, he couldn't talk, he could hardly breathe, and uh, they called for the doctor. So his overseer was this guy, Albin Rollins, and he asked him to bleed him. So I guess he bleeded him, and then they called doctors, in, and they arrived, and they bled him like four more times. So they caught him in blood, and then over the next eight hours, with he had a total blood loss of 40% of his body. You know, he succumbed to his illness and died. Now, I don't know if he died from the illness or from loss of blood, you know, but you know what? Blood is the life. If you lose so much blood, yeah. it's, you know, and you know, right now you go to the doctor, if you're sick, they can test your blood for, uh, you know, AIDS, for cancer, for hepatitis C, for everything. You know, the blood tells what's going on in your life and the blood is the life. And, you know, that's, uh, Christ died. He gave his life, his blood for me, you, and the entire world to cleanse us from our sins. He was perfect. He had the perfect blood from God, you know. Uh, you know, we can save lives with tra transfusions. You know, you can donate blood to somewhere if the right type, same type. But you know what? Christ bloods all types. He saves anybody. You don't have to worry about a type of blood. His type of blood is God's blood, amen? Perfect blood. He cleanses us from all our sins. Let's look at... Ephesians 1 7. Ephesians 1 7. It says, In whom, in Jesus Christ, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. You know, it's his grace. He, you know. Think about it. Who would you die for? He wanted to die for lost sinners like me, you, and people in the entire world. Like people who, you know, we need to we need to reach sinners. Tomorrow we're going to, uh, there's the Puerto Rican Parade, Puerto Rican Festival in Humboldt Park there. And then uh, they got the Thai Festival in uh, uh, near Broadway and Irving. So we got some Spanish tracks. We got some Thai tracks, more Thai tracks. Uh, more Spanish tracks, and we got some English tracks. And you know what? We're going to give out the gift. That we're going to give out God's word, and the gift they can read about the, the eternal life is the gift of God through His blood that can cleanse them from all sin. You know, so we have to we have to be busy. And you know what? We have to remember. Remember when we take if we do the Lord's Supper, we have to be make sure we're cleansed because. Some sleep. Sleep means die. People have died for taking it unworthily. And some get sick, you know. We get sick. Maybe it's because we got sin in our life and uh or in the flesh and uh we, we we've uh you know we violated God's law. He says don't take it. Look at Matthew nine, twenty to twenty two. Matthew nine, twenty to twenty two. You know, Christ, you know. We have issues. We all have issues. You know, we all have sin. We have issues. We have issues in the flesh in this life, and we have to we have to stay 
in our we stay in our Bible, stay focused on Jesus Christ. He's the one who paid for our sins with his life, with his blood, with his body. And it says here in Matthew 9:20, and behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years. So this lady had an issue. She had a I don't know if it was a discharge or something with blood. So she had an issue, it says, of blood, 12 years. She came behind him. She came behind Jesus and touched the hem of his garment. You know what? She knew he could help her. She knew, if you believe, if, here's the thing. You have faith in Jesus Christ. We, you know, Our faith in him, it's not us. It's the person who we have our faith in who can heal us. And it says here, for she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. She, she, she believed. She trusted that Jesus yeah. could heal her. You have to believe. You have to trust. You know, uh, you know, we're going through stuff in our country now that I've never seen before. We have to just stay faithful in prayer and, uh, you know, stay focused. Stay focused on uh, the Word of God and stay in your Bible. Stay in your King James Bible and pray. Pray for each other and just uh, hang around people who love the Lord and stay focused. And tell others who don't know the Lord that they need to know Him. Amen. And it says, but Jesus turned him, but Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, so Jesus stopped and he turned, and uh, you know he looked, he turned around. You know it's always good when Jesus turns around for you, huh? You know what? The devil's in this world. He he's jumping around you. When Jesus turns around, you better look and turn. You better turn and meet him. You know you better receive him. Amen. Amen. It says, but Jesus turned him about when he saw her. He said, daughter, be of good comfort. You know, God's Jesus got comfort. He's got comfort for all of us, but we just got to turn to him. Yeah. You know, people turn, you know, something happens. They turn to the, they turn to the world. They tur turn everywhere but Jesus, you know. The person that could save them, the person that could take them away from their sins, the person that can help them with any, any disease, anything, they don't turn to him. They need to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says, and the woman, it says, daughter, be of good comfort. You know, he said good comfort. You know, when God says good comfort, he gives you comfort. He gives you that perfect peace. Thy faith. So her faith in Jesus Christ has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house. Oh, no, okay. Yeah, yeah, so he made her whole. He made her whole. Praise God. You know what? When God heals, when you get healed, something, you know what? The doctors work. The physician works. God heals. Amen. The physician works, God heals. Praise God, give him the glory. If you're sick and you get better, praise God. And if you're sick and you need to be helped, seek, seek, find, find Jesus. Pray to him, ask for his help. He can heal you. You know, people go, oh, I got to go to the doctor. I got to go to the internet. I got to go to faith. No, go to Jesus, yeah. go to prayer. Get on your knees and pray. He hears prayer. It's, you know, it's the last thing we do. You know, our flesh you know, we got to go to the world. No, we got to go to the spirit. We should live in the spirit. We got to go to Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's the only way to get healed. You know, Jesus made, you know, when he said the New Testament, it's a covenant, it's agreement between God and man, his blood. Let's look at uh, Hebrews 9, 12 through 17. Hebrews 9, 12 through 17. Hebrews 9, 12 through 17. It says, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by the means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, that which, which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead otherwise it is, is of no strength at all while the testator liveth whereupon neither the first testament which was dedicated without blood and then go to verse 22 and almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without the shedding of blood is no remission 
So you know what? Christ had to die to pay for our sins. And he did die, and he paid, and it's the New Testament. Because you know what? His body died, but then the blood, he was resurrected. He came back to life. So it's in the New Testament. You know, we're living in Jesus Christ. You know, he's alive at the right hand of the Father God in heaven right now, waiting to come back to take the people who are saved, who are past or dead, and the people who are alive, who are living, who trust him, to heaven one day, to be with him for eternity. You know, uh, in the old in the Old Testament, they would sacrifice animals, and the high priest would go in and put the, the blood on the altar. He took that blood. It says here uh, in verse 12 of Hebrews 9, it says, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but his own blood. So he took his own blood, and he entered in once into the holy place, the heavenly place in heaven with God the Father, having obtained eternal redemption for us. So we're redeemed. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. You know, we're redeemed through the blood of Jesus Christ. His blood cleanses us from all sin. And, you know, what? he made a covenant. He made anybody who comes, he will no wise cast out. Anybody. He says, I am the way, John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. You know, there's only one way, Jesus Christ. You know, he's the only way. There is no other way. Uh, 1 Peter 1, 19. You know, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Only his blood, his blood. 1 Peter 1, 19. It's said, but with the precious blood of Christ is of a lamb without spot, without blemish and without spot. And it says, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in the last times for you. So he was revealed. He was made known to us. You know what? God knew what was going to happen. God knew man was going to fall in the beginning. And he, you know, he knew Adam was going to fall. So he, made, he had a way. He had a plan. There was a plan before he even made the world. He had a plan that he was going to send his son, Jesus Christ, to pay for our sins. You know, he was he's perfect. His blood. He, he knew he was... He, Jesus Christ came to earth, born in a human body, but he was 100% man, 100% God, tempted like you or me, but without sin. He lived 30, about 33 years on the earth, and then he laid down his life. He laid it down, and he took it up again. He said, he did. He said, destroy this temple in three days, I'll raise it back up. And he raised it back up. Amen? Yep. Amen. He beat the death, hell, the grave, the devil, sin, you know, and he beat the law, everything. You know, he wrote the law, amen? amen. You know, the precious blood of Jesus, the perfect blood from God, no sin. Look at Romans 5, 8 through 11. Romans 5, 8 through 11. It says, but God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So while we were yet sinners, when I wasn't even never thinking, I wasn't even never thinking, I was thinking about sin. I was in wickedness. And you know what? He died for us. He died for you, me. And if you're still in sin, he died for you. You need to come and trust him. It says much more than being now justified by his blood. So we're justified. We're declared righteous by his blood. His blood cleanses us from all sin. So we're justified by his blood. We shall be saved from the wrath through him. You know what? We're not going to see no wrath. We're not going to see no wrath. And it says, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So when he got raised, we're saved by his life to eternal life one day. You know, one day we're going to be with him. Uh, it's a blood, the blood atonement, the reconciliation, the restoration, the favor, the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin. Look at also Romans 5, 18 and 19. It says, Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification in life. You know, Adam ate whatever that was and disobeyed God and sin came on the man. And then Jesus Christ paid with his life. He laid down his life and he took it up again. He paid with his blood and his body and he, his blood cleanses us from all sin. And it says, 
the free gift, the free gift of Jesus Christ, the free gift of eternal life, and it's upon all men justification of life. And then it says, for as by one man's disobedience, that's Adam, his disobedience, many were made sinners. So we're all made sinners. You're all born into sin. You nobody's, uh, you know, people like, oh, I don't sin. You know, yeah. I think Pastor asked a monk one time, and he was telling him, you know, sin separates you from God, and you God, you cannot come into God's presence because you have sin. And then the, the monk said, oh, well, I don't have sin. <laughs> and so, I mean, he's like, he's lying there. You know, we all have sin. You know, we all have we all sin and come short of the glory of God. Amen. All, every single person, you know, even saved people, we, you know, in the flesh, we do things that, you know what, we have to be careful. We have to be accountable. We have to be uh, alert. We have to, you know, the, the devil will throw stuff. He wants to trip us up. He doesn't want to use us to lead or, or tell anybody else about Jesus Christ. And it says in verse 18 and 19, uh, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, so, so shall many be made righteous. So it's the eternal life through Jesus Christ, through the mm -hmm. one. And in 21, that as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life for Jesus Christ our Lord. It's his grace. He extends that. He extends that to every single. He said, if I be lifted up, I draw all men unto me. So he's his grace. He wants he wants you to come. He wants people to come. He wants people to come to him. He wants you to come with your problems, with your sickness, with everything that's in this world. He wants you to come and give it to him and turn from your ways and turn to him and he'll save your soul. And his blood cleanses us from all soul. Let's look at John 6:27. I got a few verses here, John In John 6, John 6, 27, it says, John 6, 27, it says, labor not for the meat which perisheth, you know, for the food, you know, food, you know, and things in this life, they perish. Everything perisheth which endureth. And it says, labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life. You know what? You know, Jesus came down from heaven. He paid for our sins. You know, he paid. He died on the cross. And he wants, he wants to give you that eternal life, but you have to turn to him. He wants you to, you know, you know we have to come. With, we gotta, you know what? We gotta get, you got to get to your end of yourself and ask him to forgive you your sin. You have to have no other place to turn. You turn to Christ. It says, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. And then look at verse 32. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. So God sent his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true bread. He is the true meat. He's, he's the meat everlasting life. And it says, for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. If you want to, you want life, you get it from God. He is the bread. He's the true bread of God from heaven. You know, he came down for heaven to pay for our sins. And then look at verse 35. It says, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never <laughs> hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. So you want to never hunger, thirst, trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You know, you have to be, you know, he never said never. You'll never hunger. You'll never thirst. You got to trust him. Look at no, uh, verse number 47, 47 and 48. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am, says my <coughs> God, I am that bread of life. And in verse 50 and 51, it says, this is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. And I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall give, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give him is, is my flesh, which I'll give for the life of the world. So he gave his life. He gave his bread. He gave his life. He gave his body. He died. Then he shed his blood. And he made that New Testament, that covenant with us, that we can be with him for eternity. Let's look at his blood. Uh, his blood. First John one seven. First John one seven. <coughs> it 
says, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, with one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. You know, it's a picture. We you know it's a picture. His blood, and we do in uh the Lord's Supper, it's it's in remembrance of what Christ did. He died for us. He paid with his body and he paid the what uh the, the the blood is the wine you drink, or not the wine you drink, the grape juice. Yeah, wine, a prophet, priest, or king would never take anything that's uh, spoiled into his body. So uh, we use, uh, you would use uh, grape juice, grape juice. You know, wine, you get drunk. Wine's a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whoever uses is deceived. Yeah. You, know, you know, you got to, dec we dec you know what? We got to declare his death. That it, you know, people don't think. You know, they make it lightly. Make sure you're living right. Everything that is not under the blood, no sin in the flesh. You're living for Christ. You're doing His will. You know, you don't want to take the Lord's Supper unworthingly. You know, you might get sick or you might die. Look at Luke 22, 19 and 20. That's our text. Luke 22, 19, 19 and 20. He said, and he took bread and he gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper. So he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. So he was going to die on the cross. He said, Do in remembrance. It's going to be done in remembrance. So when we do it, it's in remembrance. Yeah. Likewise, also the cup after supper. So he took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup, in, is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. So it's the covenant. He gave that blood, and he put it on the mercy seat in heaven to, to, to pay for our sins, and God the Father accepted it. He accepted it. He accepted that payment. You know, he died on the cross. He laid it down. Um, No, after supper, his blood in the New Testament. He's risen from the dead. He put his blood on the mercy seat in heaven. heaven Hebrews 9, 22 to 28. No, he took the he's blood. It says Hebrews 9, 22. And it says, almost, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. So they're purged. So they're purged or cleansed or purified. Purged is the Greek word katharis, which means purged, to cleanse out, to clean thoroughly. Uh, you know, it cleanses us of our guilt and sin to remove impurities by cleaning, to become pure, clean, or clear. So Jesus Christ, when he paid that with that payment with his blood, it cleanses us from all sin. Hebrews 9, 23 says, It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves, which better sacrifices than these. So, you know, the things that the patterns, what they did here on earth with the shedding of blood with the animals, but when Christ laid it, they did perfect. It's the perfect will of God, what he did. He brought that blood on the mercy seat to God the Father in heaven. And it says, For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but in the heaven himself, and now to appear in the presence of God for us. You know, he appeared for God for us to cleanse us for our sins, nor yet that he should, should offer himself often. So he didn't offer. He did it one time. So when it says you take the Lord's Supper, it says as oft as you do it, I don't know. If you do it a lot, I don't know. God did it one time, but in remembrance of him, it says, nor that you should offer himself. Uh, it says, for Christ has not entered in a holy place, which are the figures of the true, but in heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us, nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. So the holy priest would enter once a year, and he'd have to, you know, he'd have to have all this sin, everything, He'd have to be like living almost a perfect life. I don't know if it's possible perfect, but he'd everything under the blood. It was all prayed out. He'd go in there and sprinkle the blood or the goats and the heifer on, on, uh, 
in the Holy of Holies, but they'd tie a thing to his leg because if he died, they'd, 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 they'd drag him out, you know. If that bell wasn't ringing, I think he had like a little bell on his leg. Uh, it says, For Christ has not entered a holy place made with hands. And it says, Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entering the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then must he have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. So he put away sin. He beat sin. He, he put it away. One time. One time he did it. You know, priests, uh, see priests, they're like offering, you know, they, they ask, come to confession. How can you confess? Christ paid for the sin. You come to Christ. You come to him. He's the only one who can take away your sins. His blood is the only way you can be cleansed. There is no other way. His blood. Look at Romans 5, 9. Romans 5, 9. Men can't take away. They need us. They need a savior too. They need to pray. Any, every, every single human being needs Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They need to come and ask Him for forgiveness of their sins. He already paid. He paid on the. He paid on the cross of Calvary, and He's alive and well. He's sitting on. You know, a lot of people. They got people, Christ on the cross. He's not on the cross no more. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father, waiting to come back. And this time he's he came back. He's going to come back as a judge this time. He's not going to be coming back. First time he came to save seek which was lost, but now he's coming back as a judge. Romans 5 9 says, Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. You know what? We're saved. If you're saved in Jesus Christ, you ain't got to worry about nothing. This life give you this life can give you trouble. You can have things, but the wrath to come is going to wrath from God. You're not going to be there. God's going to take His people out. You're saved from the wrath from wrath to come. Look at Revelation twelve eleven. Revelation twelve eleven. Or we can go Revelation ten. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. You know, Satan's going to be cast down. He's going to be cast down in the pit. He accuses God, oh, remember Gary did this, or, or she did this, or he did this. But you know what? He could accuse the day and night. He accuses, but God says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of Jesus. You know what? We're made whole by the blood of Jesus. It covers all my sins, past, present, and future. Right. And it says, and by the word of their testimony, testimony that I want to serve God. I want to serve the Lamb. I want to tell others about Him. I want to know how they can get to heaven. And they love not their lives unto death. You know what? What can they do? They can kill me. My body dies, but my spirit's going to go to God. I'm going to go to heaven. Amen. My body's going to go back to the ground, to the dust of the ground, but. You know, we overcame by, we're overcomers by the blood of the Lamb, His blood. It's not my blood, it's the blood of the Lamb. He's a, I'm adopted into the family of God. You know, we're saved from the wrath to come, the blood of Jesus. Look at Acts 20, 28. Acts 20, 28. It says, take heed. So, take careful notice. Take heed. Therefore, unto yourselves, you know, to ourselves. We got to take heed. We got to be alert. We got to understand what's going on. And to all the flock over to which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. So, you know what? It's a serious thing. We have to feed the church of God. I got to teach, study. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman needing not being ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We have to read his word, and uh, we have to lift up God. We have to get these tracks out. we got to get them to people. You know, sitting, you know, it looks good, all these tracks on the wall, but that ain't getting in nobody's hand. He's got to, I'd rather see no tracks. and like, wow, we need to get some more tracks. Amen? Amen. we got to tell people, the church of God, which he's purchased with his own blood, you know, his blood, is the only blood that cleanses people from all their sins. You know, we're made overseers. We've got to feed people to God's word. You know, we're purchased with his blood, the members, people who come. You know, what can wash, you know, what can wash away our sins? 
nothing but the blood of Jesus. Look at Revelation 5.9. I'm going to close soon. You know, his blood. His blood is the only thing that cleanses people from their sins. You know, you know it's Friday night, Chicago. I don't know. People graduated. People are having parties. You know, they're drinking or smoking or doing drugs or, you know, fornicate. Or, it's wickedness, wickedness, wickedness going on. They, and you know what? It's pleasure of sin for a season. Everybody thinks they're having fun till the rewards. What you reap is what you sow, and it comes back and... And it bites you, and all of a sudden now you got problems, you got sicknesses. You know what? You need to turn to Jesus and ask Him. You know, live a clean life, live a godly life, live a God life in, through Jesus Christ, and He can help you with the Holy Ghost. You know, He guides us, He directs our paths. Uh, Revelation five nine says, and they sung a new song, saying, "Thou art worthy, take take to take the book and to open the seals thereof." For thou wast slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. But you know what? There's people in every every tongue, every kindred, so every kind of people, every family, every tongue, and every people and every nation. Jesus Christ has redeemed some, you know, but there's more to be redeemed. God, but you know what? They got to come. They have free will. God has redeemed us and people and here and every nation. Look at 1 Peter, 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. Wouldn't it be great if everybody just turned to Jesus and we had a big, a real revival and you know, people start talking, you know, people start, you know, you got to worry, you don't even have to lock your cars, lock your doors, go to work, you ain't got to worry about, you know, nobody trying to rob you or hurt you or, you know, you know, only through Jesus Christ, only through Jesus. He'll take a wicked sinner and make him as clean, as white as snow, amen. amen. And it says in 1 Peter 1, 18, for as much, so... Since, because inasmuch as you know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by the traditions from your fathers. You know what? People in the past, their fathers, you know, tradition, tradition will send you to hell. Religion will send you to hell. You know, you got to get away from it. You got to turn to Christ. But then it says in verse 19, bought with the precious blood of Christ is of a lamb without blemish and without spot. It's the only way. Who fairly was foreordained before the foundation of the world, who was manifest in these last times for you. You know, it says, being born again, verse 23, of not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, but of the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. You know what? God lives in us. We need to preach his word. It says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We need to tell people about Jesus. Uh, you tell them how his blood can make them clean. It's like a drug. It is. So it's not a drug. It's the God's God's blood can cleanse you from all sin. Let's sing uh, and let's pray. Dear Lord, I pray. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for your shedding your blood for my sins and the sins of every single person. Lord, I pray that you just bless us, bless the service, bless your word. Use us to be uh, tell her to be uh, work, workers of you to tell people about you till you come lord i pray all these things in jesus name amen, amen. we're gonna sing page hold on page number hold on, blood. somewhere in the back uh Second, I'll find this. Where's nothing but the blood of Jesus? Hold on, nothing. Uh, three hundred seventy-six. Three hundred seventy-six. Song number three seventy-six. Nothing but the blood. What can wash away my sin? 
Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my part in this I seek, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing this my plea, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow. That makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. It's nothing but the blood of Jesus. It cleanses all sinner and turns him white as snow. Amen. We have to stay in his word. Stay in his holy Bible. Stay focused. Tell people. Get out. Get tracks out. We're going to be out getting out tracks tomorrow. Serve the Lord. You know, if you want to help, I think the parade uh, is at 2 o'clock on Division from Western to Sacramento. 2:30. Or 2.30 from uh, on Division Street between Cal uh, uh, Sacramento and Western Avenue. And then uh, the Thai Festival is over by uh, Irving Park and Sheridan Road a little bit east right across from Thoric Hospital. And if anything, be out there maybe 12, 12, 30 tomorrow, handing out some tracks there. And, uh, you know, pray for us, pray for our safety, and, uh, you know, pray that uh, people would receive uh, God's word gladly. And uh, uh, we have to, you know, we got to be busy. These days are the end times. It's the end times now. Everything is, uh, you know, we've been praying for Miss Kim. She needs sleep. We're praying God uh, bless her with some sleep. And, uh, Curtis with his dogs, he has an issue. He's got eight dogs. They're telling him that his dogs growl, and uh, he's got to get rid of four to pray that uh, he can figure out what to do. And uh, you know, God will bless him. He's by himself there, and he's seeking. He 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 studies uh, the Bible, and uh, he lifts up the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, we're praying for Jimmy Donovan. Jimmy Donovan, you know what? We love him. He's a friend, and uh, I want him to be the friend of the friend of Jesus. Amen. Let's, let's pray. Dear Lord, again, I pray for all these people in our prayer request list. And Lord, your blood cleanses us from all sin and it can cleanse them too, like people who don't know you. Lord, I pray that people would come. I pray that people would just uh, give us the opportunity to tell them about you and just take a track and, and then receive you in their, you know, into, into, the, into their life that you could save them. You paid. You paid. You paid with your life. You paid with your body. You paid with your blood. And you're sitting on the right hand of God the Father waiting to come back to judge righteously. And we pray for people's souls. We pray for lost family members, lost friends, lost enemies, people who don't know you. We pray that they would come to you and they would seek and search and they'd find you, Lord. And we pray that you would uh, give us strength to carry on till you come. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth, 
is Mount Zion on the sides in the north, the city of the great king. And that's Psalms 48, 1 and 2. And Steve Sajak in Texas, we love you. Hopefully you're staying cool. I heard it's getting hot again. It's in the 70s here, but I heard it's in the 90s and 100s uh, south and southwest. So we're praying that God will keep you cool. And uh, Danny Jacqueline, in Tennessee, stay, 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 stay encouraged, brother. Live for the Lord. And uh, till we come again on uh, Sunday, praise God. Amen.